Iowa State and Oklahoma State, close game, and the ball goes into orbit, way high. Ref blows the whistle, says that's illegal. Don't know the rules there. And this is everything you missed that you never planned on watching. First up, we're going to Ireland for the All-Ireland Championship. We had Dunloy versus Bally Hale. There's the slither. There's Ireland. It's all the counties, okay? Then you win your county, then you win your province, then you go to the championship. These two teams, that's where they're from. One of them is a town of 300 people, Bally Hale. There's like 197 males that live in the town, and they are tied for the most all Ireland county club national championships ever. We're talking small towns. Ballyhale, the Ballyhale Shamrocks. They wear green and white. The other team also green. I think every team is just green. Proud country, Ireland. This is hurling. You hit the slither with the hurley. If you hit it above the crossbar, but through the uprights, it's one point. If you hit it into the goal, it's three points. Like, and then there's a hand pass. You can only, ooh, what a save. The goalies have to be absolutely crazy. There's no padding at all, just the same stick everyone else has. But they do make saves every now and then. I, I learned from my Irish relatives, thanks to Sam and Jack for teaching me, goals are rare. A lot of times they just take the one point up top because otherwise that, ooh, there is a lot of fighting involved. These kids are ready there. It's hard hitting. You're gonna get knocked around. You're gonna get hit with the stick. Probably a lot of bloody knuckles. When you run, you have to bounce it on your hurley or you have to only take three steps, something like that. Those are the rules. Pretty crazy. These aren't professional athletes. Oh, this is the best. This guy's fighting with the ref and then just decks, his, decks the other guy and then goes right back to fighting with the ref. A little Dean Portman action. Just like, get out of here, dude. And okay, back to you. Why'd you blow the whistle? It kind of just hit my hand. I didn't grab it. The Bally Hale Shamrocks won. They beat Dunloy. They were excited about it and they had a lot of people to thanks. Thanks a million. Thanks a million, everyone on day one today. Thanks a million, Pat. Thanks a million to, to Catherine and Paul. Thanks a million, Jim. Thanks a million, John. Thanks a million, Sean. And thanks a million, Siobhan. Thanks a million for three lads. Thanks a million to everyone, Power Valley Hill Shamrocks. All right, to women's basketball. Now, I know you guys watched this game, but you missed this part. Tied 54 points apiece with 7.7 .7 seconds to go. Southeast Missouri has the ball. They find the shot. Oh, man. Just gets right by her, floats it up, takes the lead. You all saw that. You celebrated it and you were excited, but you missed this guy. He celebrated that that ball was going to go in so early, so cocky about it. No one else in the stadium was close. This guy got his whole arms up in the air and then was able to hold him there for a little bit because he knew that ball was going in. I mean, we like to play first up. I've never seen someone dominate everyone else that badly. And then the, the coach got to yell at everyone. Look at her here. She's, she's got to yell at everyone. And she's like, get off the floor. Get off the floor. Get off the floor. Don't make people have to be mean in a time of celebration. It's rude on the team there. She, she wants to celebrate too. And then the other team, you already know this, they miss. So Missouri wins on that shot. And that, that guy celebrated early. And he's the real winner more than anyone else in that gym. All right, let's go back to handball. Team USA's time in the sun has ended, but they did win two games, which is great because the 25 International Handball Federation games they played before this tournament, they lost all 25. So they're moving up. Big thanks to Pal Murkowski, the keeper. Look at that. He opened the second up with just crazy saves. That one almost gets by. He rolls it back, and he just went on to save every shot Belgium was taking in the second half getting his foot in the way, getting his hands in the way, getting his whole body in the way. Look at this one. Foot, saved, foot again, no goal, foot again, no goal. I think being a handball goalie is a very similar tactic to scaring away a bear. You just got to stand there and make yourself as big and as intimidating as possible, and they don't know how to get around you, and they can't. His feet are everywhere. You got a penalty shot, and yeah, he comes out, Makes himself big. Number 13, he's going to try and fake him out. Doesn't fall for it. Takes away the angle. Saves the rebound. What a sequence. Yes! Look at that. Doesn't fall for the fake. No angle. Pops right back up for the rebound. Off the hand. Celebrates. This is his classic celebration. Now, something in handball. 
they pull the goalie all the time, not just when they are losing and they need the extra man like in hockey. Like anytime they get the ball in the offensive zone, they the goalie runs off, a six player comes on, and it's a six on five offense. Not every time, but a lot of the times. So here they are doing that, and it works. They're going to pass it, they find the open man, they score, and Belgium tries to take advantage of the U.S. not having their goalie, but look at our guy Pal. He runs, chases it down, and makes the save on the run. That's his celebration. Yes! And then he just saves every shot. Belgium didn't know what to do. They're like, who is this guy? Another penalty shot by this 40-year-old? Fake, doesn't fall for it. Post again. That's the same thing that happened last time, and that's his celebration. Doesn't fall for it. Hits the post. Actually, he said that with his foot. It's my bad. Sorry, pal. Even at the end, when Team USA won and they're celebrating and time was running out, the shot would not have counted anyway because Belgium already lost. The timer went. But look what happens when the guy does shoot. He still misses. Pal was making saves even after the clock ran out. Or Belgium stinks. Michigan, Minnesota hockey. That's where we're going next. And Michigan's about to score in overtime to win the game, but the ref blew the whistle for no reason. He just figured, like, the goalie probably has that one. I'll blow the whistle. And then the goal didn't count. Goalie never had it. You're the fucking worst. The worst. The worst. Fuck me. So, yeah, the goalie never had the puck. And and Michigan should have scored. But the ref blew it dead. And right after that, Minnesota has the puck. They're coming down. It's three on three because it's overtime and they're going to get a hooking penalty, which upsets the coach even more. Hooking. Really good motion by him shaking his head. Nah, but this was hooking. His stick is all the way around his body underneath the other stick. Good defensive play, but illegal. Captain of Minnesota is like, did they call it? Then it's a four on three, which is pretty rare in overtime. But then instead of losing a man, you, you gain a man if you're on the penalty kill. Penalty kill becomes a power play in overtime and they score. The Minnesota scores and Michigan loses. Ricochets off that defenseman right to Minnesota. They put it in, they win. Michigan coach not happy. These fans super excited. Back to college basketball. We had Longwood and Presbyterian playing each other. Both really close games at the end. Presbyterian had the ball in both the women's match and the men's match had the ball to tie the game or win it in the final seconds and in both games blew it. Presbyterian goes down. Longwood wins. I wonder if they rode buses together. You know, the Presbyterian, I wonder if there's two couples dating on both teams. They could, you know, commiserate together, celebrate together. Same thing. It might have been a whole bonding experience on the bus ride from Longwood to Presbyterian. I don't know how long that trip is. I don't know where either of these colleges are. In the International League T20, which is a new league, and they got some big name players, they're paying out. We had a devastating finish. Two West Indies players facing off against each other, Andre Russell and DJ Bravo. And Russell is bowling, and he's got a pretty good lane to win. They need 20 runs and six balls. They got six on the first ball. That one sneaks through for another two, which keeps keeps DJ Bravo on strike, so he's hitting, and Russell's like, are you kidding me? Now it's 14 runs off of four balls, and Bravo sends that right back up the middle for an automatic four, and now the captain of the team is like, what's going on here? And they're talking to him like, man, you're blowing it. Maybe try doing something or anything different. Eight runs off three balls, just a little tap job, and what's interesting here is it gets DJ Bravo off strike. So hello, the new guy comes in. And he's not much of all the way out. Another six. Horrible, horrible last over from Andre Russell. And he feels bad about it. So let's not make him feel worse. But yeah, absolutely atrocious performance down the stretch by him. All right, let's round it out. This is important. Who was the fan of the week? B1 last week. Who do you got this week? Think about it. Put thought into it. Which one of these four wins fan of the week? It's up to you. Subscribe.